Scoot Henderson has had a rough start to his rookie season. Through the first four games of the regular season, he's averaging 8.3 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, 4 assists per game, 4.3 turnovers per game, 33.3, 5.6, 80 splits, 37.3 true shooting percentage. This is somebody I said all preseason was one of the most NBA ready point guard prospects to enter the NBA. In fact, I said he's the most NBA ready teenage point guard prospect I've ever evaluated. So why is he struggling to start his rookie season? What's been the cause of his struggles? Should there be reason to be concerned? Well that's what I want to talk about in this video. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2024 NBA season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Scoot Henderson. To give you my honest answer on if I'm concerned about the start to the season Scoot has had, the answer is not really. I understand if you believe this is just me being in denial or trying to cope, considering how high I am on Scoot Henderson as a player and what I've said in previous videos about how he projects to the NBA. I totally understand if you think that's what I'm doing and I'm not going to try and change your mind on that necessarily if you believe that. But here's the thing, it's common for rookie point guards to struggle early on. Let's compare Scoot's rookie numbers to other point guards through their first four NBA games. Now like I mentioned in the intro, Scoot is averaging 8.3 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, 4 assists per game, 4.3 turnovers per game, on 33.3, 5.6, 80 splits, and a 37.32 shooting percentage. Here's what other point guards averaged through the first four games of their rookie seasons. Darius Garland averaged 9.5 points per game, 1.3 rebounds per game, 3.5 assists per game, 3.3 turnovers per game on 37.2, 33.3. No free throw attempts available splits with a 40-42 shooting percentage. Jamal Murray averaged 0.5 points per game, 2.5 rebounds per game, 2.3 assists per game on 0-0, 66.7 splits. Russell Westbrook averaged 11.5 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, 2.5 assists per game, 2.3 turnovers per game on 38.1. 44.4, 76.9 splits, and a 48.1 true shooting percentage. And there are more examples that aren't four game samples of a rookie point guard in terms of struggling early on. Kyrie Irving ha had an awful NBA debut. He shot 2 for 13 from the field. Romello had 0 points in his NBA debut. So Scoot isn't the first and he won't be the last rookie point guard to struggle early on. And when you dive deeper into Scoot's rookie numbers, it does add context. His inefficiency comes a lot from his 3 point shooting. That 5.6% from 3 on 4.5 3 point attempts per game is what's dragging his efficiency down the most because he's shooting 54.2% on two-point attempts, and he's taking six two-point attempts per game, which is slightly above the league average. Looking at his three-point misses on tape, I don't notice any glaring red flags with his form. I don't notice any lack of confidence. I mean, he's shooting 5.6% from three and still taking a decent amount of them. If this was a playoff caliber team, I would be concerned about this, but considering Portland is rebuilding, I do think Scoot getting those shooting reps and being able to play through his misses is valuable. I don't think he will be a great 3 point shooter long term, but I do think the shots will eventually start to fall, and I don't think he will be this level of bad as a shooter from 3 over the course of his rookie season. Another thing I noticed with Scoot on tape is he doesn't have a great grasp of how refs are gonna call him in terms of foul drawing. I feel like on his drives he's trying to draw fouls and expects calls with rather marginal contact. 
a lot of his misses at the basket to me feel like he's trying to draw a foul instead of using his quickness and strength to try and finish at the basket strong. Eventually, he's going to have to realize that he's too strong and physical to get calls that someone like Trey Young does. And because of how physically imposing Scoot is, he's going to have to learn that teams will be more physical with him when he attacks the basket. Another thing is he sometimes has been limited in how aggressive he is because of the fact he's in foul trouble. And he can't be as aggressive as he needs to be given his strengths as a player because of the risk of picking up an offensive foul. I think once he sharpens his foul discipline and adjusts to the physicality he's gonna have to deal with based off how strong of a player he is, he will get better as a finisher. He also needs to clean up his turnovers, be more thorough on his pass attempts, protect the basketball better, be more in control on his drives, things you expect from a rookie point guard. So I'm not too worried about them, especially from an athletic based point guard like Scoot. These things are very common and I think with Roy Reps, given how smart of a player he is, he will eventually start to clean up those things. And I'll be honest, on tape, it's not like he's been just a negative and there's nothing encouraging. Because there have been positive signs through these four games on tape. Signs that we all saw prior to the NBA, signs that made myself and many others so high on him as a prospect. He is still attacking the basket, and when he does attack the basket with real intent, he's using his burst, quickness, speed, and strength to finish at the rim. He is getting to his spot as a mid-range shooter, especially in the Toronto game. He was very good at using acceleration and deceleration to stop on a dime and create separation and pull up from mid-range and really the Raptors game even though it wasn't great from the field that was a positive game in my opinion because he showed a lot of the signs that made him a special point guard prospect even through the struggles. There are enough to suggest you shouldn't overreact to a slow start to a rookie season with Scoot on tape, especially considering it's been just four games and he's a 19 year old point guard prospect. Now, Scoot Henderson has been awful to start his rookie season. There's no way around it. The production and efficiency are dreadful, and the signs on tape line up with his struggles. But I also think there's reason to believe he can and will be a lot better as the season goes along. His rookie struggles line up with what's common in young point guards. His numbers aren't a direct result of him struggling and being flat out awful in areas that were viewed as strengths entering the NBA. And his positives on tape through his struggles are things that line up with what he was projected to be good at entering the NBA. I would be a bit more concerned if Scoot was shooting like 40% at the rim and wasn't able to finish at the basket and he was all of a sudden really bad with his handle but his inefficiency is more about a shooting slump from three a slump that I feel like lines up with more of him just not hitting shots more than him having mechanical foreign problems or lack of confidence and it's not like he was projected to be this three-point shooting sniper entering the NBA. With that being said, he does need to improve on things. He needs to improve his foul discipline so he can be more aggressive on offense and play to his strengths. He needs to understand how physically imposing he is as a player and how that will dictate what type of contact will and won't result in fouls drawn. He needs to focus more on trying to finish at the basket instead of drawing fouls. And eventually that three point side is gonna have to start falling more. I'm not saying he has to be Steph Curry from three or Damian Lillard from three, but he needs to be better than 5.6%. And eventually there will need to be a point where he's out of the shooting slump. But I'm confident he can and will improve on these things. He's too talented and smart of a player not to improve in these areas and I think based off the improvements he's made prior to the NBA and how young he is and how talented he is, he will get better as the season goes along. It's really foolish to form an opinion on a rookie point guard after 4 games and I still believe in the projections I had for Scoot entering his rookie season 
despite the rather rough start. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much. Again, haven't already? Like, subscribe, and notification bell notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and I'll move you to my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2023 season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, Herzog Hoops Podcast, episode 5 is out now. Desmond and I talked about a bunch of things from like Halloween stuff to like NBA rookies, including Scoot, and just a bunch of other fun stuff. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that in the description below and pinned comment. Let me know what you think about Scoot Henderson in the comment section below. But with that being said, have a nice day. I'll see you guys in the next one.